and welcome to the video for Dancing in the Shadows. I'm Marvin Cohen, the author of this Sephardic memoir. One of the first things I'm usually asked is, why did you write this book, and how did you learn what you wrote about the ancient Sephardic cultures? It's an easy question to answer. It's because I lived with my Sephardic nonna, my maternal grandmother, for a total of 12 out of my first 20 years. I didn't know it at the time, but when I was growing up in the 1940s and 50s, the Sephardic cultures in America were fast becoming extinct. Nona understood this and tried to entrust me with the preservation of her Sephardic traditions through living it and telling me about our history. I felt compelled to write Dancing in the Shadows to try to bring to life the lost Sephardic cultures I experienced while living with Nona. Dancing in the Shadows follows Nona's life from her childhood in Macedonia in the Ottoman Empire through her death in America in 1966. It's my novelized treatment of the multitude of generations that make up my unforgettable family. It was very easy to write Dancing in the Shadows, for my extended family was a family of storytellers who loved to recount the stories of their youths in Palestine, Yemen, Macedonia, Turkey, and Greece. Starting from about tw age 12, I realized that these stories were of lives and times and cultures that would never come again, and I began to make short notes so that I would not forget them. I took hundreds of these short notes until I was about 60 years old. Dancing in the Shadows is derived from this collection of handwritten notes, as well as over a thousand afternoons talking with my Nona Ripka while I was in college. You see, it was while living with Nona for the first eight years of my life that I began to realize that my family was very different from the majority of other Jews who were light-skinned European Ashkenazis in New York. Everyone in our family, except Nona, had very dark skin, hair, and eyes. They didn't speak Yiddish, as did the lighter-skinned European Jews, but Ladino, which is a nearly extinct Judeo-Spanish-Arabic tongue that descends from 15th century Spain when a major branch of the Sephardim were expelled from Spain and took refuge in the Balkans, the Mideast, and Africa. Well, after high school, I went back to live with Nona Ribka and my aunt Gavira, this time in a one-bedroom apartment above a store in Brooklyn, New York, where I lived on a cot in her kitchen while studying at Brooklyn College. Every afternoon for four years, Nona would talk to me about her life, her children, her beliefs, and her ancestors. It was during this time that I began to understand the depth and scope of my family's and ancestors' experiences. During my college years, Nona taught me about intra-Judaic discrimination. Though little known, even inside American Jewish circles, Dark-skinned Sephardim have often faced discrimination by lighter-skinned Jews from Western Europe. This occurs even in Israel, where most political power resides with light-skinned Ashkenazi Jews. This discrimination also arises from the fact that Sephardic cultures, traditions, and dress are so different from Western Jews that their, and their oral rather than written tradition of passing knowledge from one generation to another seems to Westerners to be an inferior method of relating history. I learned that this discrimination is so very important in Judaism because Sephardic Jews include peoples from every corner of the earth, so many different traditions, cultures, and skin colors that they shatter the common myth of a Eurocentric American Jewish community. Sephardic peoples include Bukharian Jews from Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, Beta Israel of Ethiopia, Bene Israel and Colchin Jews of India, Kaifeng Jews of China, Jururim Mountain Jews of Azerbaijan, 
the Igbu of Nigeria, and the Lemba of Malawi. And this is just a partial list. Nana Ripka didn't read or write English, but she seemed to know and talk with me about everything of consequence for Sephardic Jews. She told me many things that I had never even dreamed of and still find hard to believe about the heroic roles of many Albanian Muslims, for example, who saved Jews during the Holocaust, hiding them in their farms and homes, giving them passports, about how IBM gave computer aid to the Nazis during World War II to keep the Nazi manufacturing effort efficient and to keep track of Jews in Western Europe. About the Sephardic world's pre-modern values, which include belief in sometimes mean and jealous spirits and maternal healing rituals and prayers done by women precantadoras and much, much more. Like many Levites in Yemen, my maternal grandfather, Abraham Levi Wab, could trace his ancestry all the way back to Aaron and Moses, right through the third century Yemenite Imurite kingdom, which was ruled for a hundred years by three Jewish kings. The other side of the coin is that I am an American and no longer an observant conservative Jew, nor a speaker of Ladino. I feel much of my Sephardic heritage fading away, so dancing in the shadows also depicts my own personal journey. I've tried to make the Sephardic traditions come alive once again. I hope that you will enjoy being transported into these almost extinct Sephardic cultures. <laughs>